without further delay i invite the resource person mr n pachayappan sir director greens mathematical institute to take over the session from here so good afternoon so madam audible yes sir audible yes sir okay madam so very good afternoon uh, today is the sixth day so our program going up to right now they are giving very good feedback only but yesterday uh, we have solved few problems on the group theory particularly i spent a lot of time with the class equations today i am planning to teach with uh, ring theory so not full ring theory just a few important problems in the ring theory and few concept uh, i try to again once more do the problem in the group theory sessions So two days for abstract algebra, two days for linear algebra, two days for uh, real analysis. The last final day for uh, complex analysis. But anyway, we have to start the problem right now. Before uh, I am going to start the problem, we have to discuss about uh, something uh, C zero one. It's a very important for the real analysis course. So we have to know about the structure of C zero one, how it will be behaving. Once we know the concept of C zero one, then we have to solve problems in the C zero one. They are asking the, some ring theory questions. Okay. Anyway, first I have I would like to Sir, excuse me, sir. Sir, kindly unmute yourself, sir. Okay, madam. I unmuted. Right now, going to mute. Ah, uh, okay, sir. Okay. Madam, can I start the session? Yes, sir. You can start the session. Okay. Is there any problem? No. Earlier you were not audible. Now you are audible, sir. Okay. Okay, now I have start x. X going from x to r. R real valued such so that f is it just f is function. That's all. R c means f is a continuous function. So instead of x, I would like to introduce a ring. So now I am going from ring to R such that f is continuous continuous function, and especially c of zero comma one. I have to introduce. This is a very important. Today we have to plan to see these things. Uh, first, uh, I would like to introduce this notation set. Set up all functions from R to R such that f is continuous. Now, c of zero comma one. This is special. This is equal to set up all f going from zero comma one to R such that f is continuous. Okay. Now. C K C K of zero comma one set up all f going from zero comma one to R such that 
A set of all f going from such that f is infinitely differentiable from infinitely many infinite number of infinitely differentiable from that is a notation. Today our session is uh, c of zero comma one. C of zero comma one. Now we take only for this thing. Set up a f going from zero comma one to R such that f is continuous. Okay. This is a set R. This is a, just you take C of zero comma one. Uh, this is our set. Now the question is C of zero comma one. First, how the element look like in the C zero one? Then in the C zero one, whether it is form a ring or not. Then we have to write our previous CSR question. Then we try to solve the problems. Okay. First, I written here. Uh, set up all f going from 0, 1 to r such that that f is continuous. We are collecting continuous function. That is, I call that set uh, just r, the script r notation. So, the geometrically, this is a c01. Now, this is very f. This is very f. So, audience, please, participant, come. Come here. So uh, now the question asking this f belongs to C01. This f belongs to C01. Please come on. Please come on. Response quickly. Yes or no? This is a f. This is some function of the curve f. Okay, very good. This is belongs to C01. Why? This is a continuous function. I am collecting function C, uh, I am collecting function from 0, 1 to R such that the F should be continuous. That's a property. That is a property. Okay. Anyway, fine. This is a continuous function collecting element from 0, 1 to R. Set up all F going from 0, 0, 1 to R that F should be continuous. This is a continuous function. Clearly, this F belongs to C01. What about this G? This is also a continuous function. And uh, continuous means here we have to assume that without any breaking of the curve. And this is a graph of the sum function. This is a continuous function. G also belongs to C01. <coughs> now the question. Uh, any, any participant, please come on. This is some H function. H. This is some H. Some curve. I called H. Now the question asking: This H belongs to C01 or not? Please, please come on, participant. H. H. H belongs to C01. No. No. Very good. Very good. No. Why? Do you know reason? Why? Yeah, I think uh, some people they written no. No means uh, I would like to explain. No, very good. Very good. Very good. It is not a function. Very good. Hema, Hema, Odi, Hema, Siva Sankaran. Good. So this is a function. This has three image and x is an element, x has. H of x, H of x, H of x. So it is not a function. It is not a function. Why? Function means every element as a unique. We have to assign unique element in the codomain. This is an element in the domain. C01, X is a member of 0 to 1. 
but the h giving three outputs the x assigning three outputs this is h of x h of x h of x so therefore h is not a function first of all h is not a function therefore h does not belongs to c0 one okay now next question what about this function some h1 of x what about this function please this function belongs to c01 no very good very good why why okay very good gv it's very good it is discontinuous and so on since it is not continuous very good that curve it will be breaking here this is a function this is just a function but not continuous therefore h does not belongs to c01 now what is our moral of the story what kind of functions are there what kind of functions are there? just you draw the graph from the 1 and 0 you take any curve which is a continuous this is also belongs to this is also belongs to that is also this is also function defined 0 to 1 and this is also function defined 0 to 1 and this is also function defined 0 to 1 this is function defined 0 to 1 this is a function defined 0 to 1 and so on all choice of curve you have to draw that could be without any breaking and as well as it should be graph of some curve graph of some curve uh, function of the sum curve function of the sum curve all those curves we have to collecting this is at the set exactly we are written here set of let's going from 0 to 0 to uh, 0 comma 1 r such that f is continuous this meaning that this is geometric a little bit we have to understand this kind of curve we are collecting that is c01 okay now the question here the set eh? you take any two element how to define what is the difference between and groups and rings basic difference do you know do you know group it satisfying four property you know everyone and uh, the defining binary operation take any two element again and so on associative identity inverse okay you take element in the group it will be giving binary operation producing other element that other element also belongs to the set but in the ring the same thing but group it will be only one binary operation but ring containing two binary operations yes right so one is multiplication and another one you know basic definition of ring so two binary operation involving simultaneously same set and the addition abelian group and multiplication semi group and extra that will satisfy distributive laws this property is some set satisfied then the set is called the ring okay now the question is this is a set every element here all those elements are in the c01 Now the question: How to add so point-wise addition? How to multiply two element in this set? Ring now we need addition and we need multiplication. So how to multiply two element in the set? F is a function, G is a function. How to product two functions? F is a function, G is a function. How to add the function? Okay, here okay, that is a basic things. F plus G of x. I have to define f of x plus G of x. This is the addition rule. Two functions are Add how to add? It's a point-wise addition. It's a point-wise addition. What is that meaning? Just to take y. This is some f of y. This is some g of y. Then adding this point and this point. This point is nothing but here, and this point is nothing but here. Function going from zero to one to r. In r, r we know under addition is abelian group. Then we can add everything is meaningful. Okay, this is a point-wise addition. what about multiplication just to take two function out to multiply point wise multiplication that's all point wise multiplication in the sense just substitute the point f and g then product this is f of x each point is give a real number each point give a g also real number product of two real number is the again a real number this is a basic the set and how elements we can add this is the rule of adding and how we are multiplying point wise multiplication this is the basic notation so therefore this form a ring what is the additive identity of this ring 
additive identity of the ring is nothing but uh, what element you can add it will be the same element you should get what the function should be there the function should be zero function you, you take any function you should add the zero function again you getting same function only so therefore zero function is a additive identity what is the multiplicative identity one is a multiplicative identity the question one whether belongs to c0 or one yes one is a constant function just this is a function this is a constant function so belongs to c0 or one therefore one is also there and one is a multi multiplicative identity is it okay now i am going to declare or uh, the script c01 is a ring is a ring okay now i would like to write the csr question now we are going to solve the problems are you okay with this is there any any doubt about c01 notation notation point wise addition i defined point wise multiplication i defined that's all how the elements look like i already i told that okay now we have to ask question from the csr we are we are going to solve right now is there any question madam is there any question please no sir no still no question asking fine so i think i am guessing this at this time csr at least one question it will be coming regarding to c01 okay fine okay the first question number 1 let c01 be the be the ring of all real value yes madam sir uh, from one participant they have asked uh, that, please explain how c of 0,1 is a vector space okay i will explain i uh, after the question i will be explain don't worry madam okay sir let c01 be the ring of all real valued continuous function on 0 to 1 which of the following are which are the following is c of 0,1 is an integral domain id integral domain what about b the set of all set of all function vanishing vanishing at zero vanishing at zero is an maximal ideal is an maximal ideal maximal ideal the set of all set of all function vanishing vanishing at both 0 and 1 is a prime ideal the prime ideal if f belongs to c01 if belongs to c01 such that such that f of x whole for n equal to 0 for all x belongs to 0 to 1 for sum n strictly greater than 1 then f is identically zero which means f of x identically zero ah yeah identically zero identically zero means they will write three line for every x in zero every x to zero comma one please read the question know the answer please responding me i will explain very detail
read the question paper please option b aha uh -huh. set of all function where anything at is zero is a maximal ideal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay good try what about remaining uh, options remaining options please okay anyway people you should try uh, someone they ask the questions c01 how is the vector space so vector space the group it will be one operations ring it will be two operations the same set it has two operations simultaneously but the vector space is concept is little differ what is a little differ means and uh, vector addition and scalar multiplication simultaneously uh, group and ring we are taking element inside the set and uh, we are making new element again whether it is there in the set that is a concept for groups and rings but in the vector space concept if you take any two element it will be some also again there but another one more thing is the field you take any element in the set v and you take any element in the outside the set that is a, that is called a field you take any force or a scalar the scalar multiplication also when the take a vector and take any scalar and pushing it the output whether again in the set v or not so in the vector space uh, vector addition scalar multiplication we needed scalar multiplication means how the force the force could be acting in the set c01 that two things are needed so in the vector space concept this is no need but this is a vector addition another one more thing is a scalar multiplication f of alpha times f of x equal to defining scalar multiplication alpha into f of x alpha into f of x this is a vector space over r over r in the sense here we are taking a real number already given each x it will be real number and uh, alpha should be real then the product should be real for alpha take complex it is not uh, it's not defined a scalar multiplication well defined when in acting alpha in the field uh, the uh, taking alpha acting in the vector f the alpha times f also again a vector that should be again the c01 this is a real valued function this is a real number when the product again a real number and f is a continuous function alpha is a continuous function the product also continuous function so therefore it's a well defined scalar multiplication this is a vector addition and a scalar multiplication now i defined it. you have to check all those vector space property it will satisfying therefore it is a vector space so over the field is r or q you should take you never take a complex why if you take a complex if i uh, if i defined like this kind of uh, scalar multiplication is not a vector space because this is a real number and if you take a complex the product should be complex but uh, alpha times f is a vector that vector is not in the set is c01 so if i define like this then alpha should be real number or uh, any subfield of uh, r q or q of root 2 q of root 2 comma root 3 you take any subfield of r still it could be vector space you have to check all the some other conditions vector space conditions that's all anyway c01 is a vector space when uh, suppose someone given the set given the suppose uh, someone asked whether it is a vector space or not first you should ask the question sir please what is your vector addition scalar multiplication how you defining how to define the scalar multiplication once they are given then we have to check all the condition then we are conclude whether it is vector space or not it depends the vector addition and scalar multiplication okay anyway someone i would like to ask question someone asked in the c01 i will give the homework for that guy so if i take alpha is c and i defined alpha times f of x i defined like zero this is my scalar multiplication i defined like vector addition is same and the scalar multiplication defined and alpha belongs to c now the question is vector addition this and the scalar multiplication this and with respect to both the operation whether the set c01 form vector space over c that is homework for you you have to check i define the scalar multiplication like this 
with respect to this scalar multiplication and vector addition this c01 form a vector space over c over c that is my question you should write and after the class you should check okay anyway fine madam okay madam yes sir okay so now we are try to come our here come to our problems okay f is continuous f is continuous okay fine so do you know uh, the given ring they already declared c01 this guy declared this is a ring uh, they said that meaning c of 01 be the ring of all continuous real valued functions that's all so that is the meaning here this form a ring with respect to under addition i defined point wise addition and point wise multiplication with respect to both the two operations form a ring that's all that is what they said okay fine now the question is the ring could be ideal or not ideal integral domain id na integral domain is integral domain first we need what is the meaning of integral domain then we have to check so what is the meaning of integral domain a commuted ring with unity or commuted ring is said to be integral domain if you take any two non zero element the product should be non zero can i write here okay a ring commuted ring or a commuted just a commutative ring Commuted ring with the unity. You should write that is better. A commuted ring with unity. Unity means identity. Multiplicative identity. Unity means multiplicative identity. Commuted ring with unity. Commuted ring R. Commuted ring with commuted ring R with the unity is called called ID integral domain if every a not equal to 0 and b not equal to 0 then a b not equal to 0 that's all you take two non zero element whose product also non zero or some books they have written that no zero division zero division means if you take it to if you take a non zero element a there exists some non zero element c whose product equal to 0 then a is called zero division the element is zero division okay uh, uh, this is a ring this element not equal to zero there exists some element c not equal to zero such that a is equal to zero this the ring implies that zero division the ring is called zero division zero division Zero division. The ring is called zero division. Okay. Uh, integral domain means no zero division, which means you take any arbitrary real number. Uh, sorry, uh, take any arbitrary non-zero number A. You can take any non-zero number some C whose product not equal to zero. If such a ring is called uh, integral domain. So that is what uh, here most of the book standard they written Hustin and uh, uh, Galleon they written the definition for uh, first is the defined commuted ring whether the commuted ring with unity is said to be integral domain if you take any two non-zero element whose product also non-zero that's all okay that is called uh, integral domain fine for example real number is an integral domain why you take any two non-zero real number whose product also non-zero is that you take any two non zero integer whose product also non zero take any two element in the rational again whose product non zero that is a definition for integral domain locally i am saying that you take any non zero element you take any two non zero element whose product never going to zero never going to zero okay failure means failure means there exists a element a non zero there exists a element some d non zero but whose product equal to zero that is a negation of the definition what is the negation of this definition 
committed ring with unity is called the integral domain satisfying this condition a committed ring with unity is not an integral domain there exists a not equal to 0 b not equal to 0 but a b equal to 0 point out point out this statement not integral domain means you have to find two non zero element but whose product equal to zero product equal to zero okay this is a this is this is the definition for integral domain and the negation statement also we know not integral domain now the ring c01 basically they said that the ring we know ring operation also scalar the point wise addition and scalar multiplication now question is whether the ring is integral domain or not please someone please please which means no zero divisor we want to say or otherwise there is some zero divisor element the ring c01 contains some zero divisor element na then we are done which means c01 is not an integral domain therefore option a is false or if you feel something c01 is an integral domain you take two non zero element in c01 whose product is not equal to zero what is your guess someone please just you type i could understand what about you what is your conclusion yeah c01 is a clearly ring no come on response please come on It's so a very important for ring theory. Not only ring theory, it will be measure theory, and C zero one is a different story in the research program. Not ID. Very good. Discrete topology. Wow. So good. It will be a little bit advanced. Good. Okay. Anyway, I will uh, try to show that. So, so I feel C zero one is not an integral domain. Which means, what I want to, I can find a two non zero element in C zero one whose product equal to zero means I can able to produce a zero divisor element. Once I if I once I producing zero divisor element, then the ring is not an ID. Are you okay? Okay. So we know that. What do we know that C zero one, uh, all element, uh, all the elements. Look, this is an element of C zero one. This is an element of C zero one. This is also an element of C zero one. Now, I would like to. This is my function. Just to see graphically, I will show. This is my function. F function. Clearly, f not equal to zero. See. Next, I would like to say my g function. This is my g function. This is my g function. Please see here. This is my g function. G function start from here and go like this, and f function going like, and it will take zero. This is a f and g. Clearly, G also not equal to zero. G also not equal to zero. Fine. Now the question. So this is uh, some element x. What is G of x? G of x is here. What is our f of x? This is f of x. F of x is a non-zero number, and G of x is a zero number, right? You take any element up to here, some k, up to here, G zero. Now I want to define. We know already. I defined f g of x. How they are defining f of x and g of x. I defined like this. Now up to k, up to k. What is zero function? G is a zero function up to here. F is non-zero. Non-zero means f of f of x take non-zero element, and g of x is zero. So up to k, you take any element up to k. The g should be zero. The product should be zero. Okay, point number. Up to k. What about uh, k to one? K to one. You take any y. F of y is zero, but g of y is non-zero. Here, 
here this is defined this is defined uh, zero belongs to zero to k only zero not to zero x belongs to zero to k the function product it will be zero okay what about k to one what about k to one k to 1 f 0 f of y 0 but g of y is non zero f of y 0 g of y is non zero but the product is zero my two real number this is a zero real number this is a non zero real number product is zero so uh, this is up to x belongs to open k to 1 so what is the moral of the story f of g of x is equal to 0 for all x belongs to 0 to 1. I have a two non-zero element f and g whose product equal to 0. So therefore, the small f is called a zero divisor element. I can put it, and this is a ring, c0 is a ring. From that ring, I can able to find two non-zero element whose product equal to totally 0. So therefore, fg and therefore fg equal to zero. This implies that f is this implies that c zero one is not an integral domain. C zero one. Therefore, c of zero comma one is not an ID. Not an ID. It is enough to show that two non-zero element whose product equal to zero. We have lot and lot f and g. Whose product equal to zero. For example, you have to fix your f this only. Now I have to find g. Now I have to find g up to this here. This is my g. Uh, you can take up to here zero, then you can take this is your g. Up to here, you should be take zero, then g should be like this, and g should be like this, g should be like this, g should be like this, g should be like this. Or it could be like this. We can find a, given for a single f, we can find infinitely many g we can find whose, uh, whose product equal to zero. Similarly, given any g, given like this kind of g, you can able to find a f. You can able to find a f and we will do these things. Is there any question, please? The moral of the story is C01 is not an integral domain, but it's a ring. That's a ring. Committed ring with unity. That's all. It's not an ID, integral domain. Any question? Any question up to right no, now? Sir, no, sir. No. Okay. Therefore, option A is false. What about uh, B? What is the meaning of B? What is the meaning of B? Please. Here, this is a faculty development program. We are developing technique for uh, problems. What is the given? How to try to solve the problem? So, what is the B? Set of all function vanishing at zero is a maximal ideal. Do you know the meaning of this? Do you know the meaning of this? So, S is a subset of C01. S is a sub, just I defined. Okay, what is the meaning of S? Set of all F belongs to C01 such that F of 0 equal to 0. That is the meaning of this option B. Set of all functions vanishing at 0 is a maximal idea. The question is, yes, is maximal or not? That is the question. Whatever given the word, I convert in the set notation. In the parent set C01, we are collecting. We are collecting. How the element collecting? For element vanishing at zero, those elements we are collecting the set, the set form a maximal ideal or not. Okay. First of all, here, just to see here graphically, the participant, someone I want need a, your response, please come on quick. 0 and 1, this is an element of uh, this is an element of C01, right? 
this is some function this is also some element of this is f and g and this is a, for h function both three of them are in c0 now question is out of three of them which is an element in which is an element in s f or g or h which one is an element of s please very good ivaraj maladi very good come on very good super super this id very good very good gv whatever the function start from origin very good super nice excellent okay so 100% is correct for uh, gv and some other some one guy i don't know that name i forgot all those elements what are the elements the up uh, take here they said that and uh, take element in c0 one the element should have this property the element should take at zero zero that kind of function we are collecting now the question is whether this is form a maximal ideal or not first of all what is the meaning of ideal then what is a maximal ideal once we know this concept then whether it is maximal ideal or not okay i try to explain i am not going to prove this is a maximal ideal or not this is a very big result and this is not a very big theory i'm not and i am not going to prove right now it will take one and a half page right like that but uh, i will give the result of c01 a function vanishing only single point that will be maximal ideal if it is van vanishing more than one point that is not a maximal ideal i will try to explain this option i think b b or c okay anyway fine so i try to explain first maximal ideal. this is a uh ring this is a ring suppose this is an ideal ideal means first of all subgroup and ideal means what is the definition of ideal when the subset is said to be ideal first of all it should be sub ring next to take any element i and you take any element in the ring or outside or inside whatever it means the product should be i first i is said to be ideal if i should be sub ring what is the meaning of sub ring take any two element difference also there take any two element in i whose product also there that is a sub ring over okay and the sub ring is said to be ideal it has a property what property take any element in i take any element in the outside or inside take any element in i take any element in r whose product in again i then it is called i is called the ideal now the question is when the ideal is said to be maximal ideal an ideal is said to be maximal ideal this ideal does not contain any ideal other than whole or other than whole or suppose i is a maximal ideal if i <coughs> i is a maximal ideal if i contained some ideal j na then 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 the i should be j or i should be whole ring which means this ideal does not contained in between any other ideal only contained in the whole ring only or itself okay maximal ideal means it does not does not contained any proper ideal this is ideal and there is a some ideal this ideal said to be maximal ideal this ideal never containing this or that some other ideals only this ideal contained whole ring okay anyway you know the maximal ideal i am not going to detail explain so the question is whether this set as a ideal or not now i i have tried a general result if you take the result from the result you can conclude set s is equal to set of all k belongs to c01 such that f of k equal to 0 k belongs to 0 comma 1 only 1k then this s is called in a maximal ideal s is called maximal ideal 
not only is zero you take any element 0 to 1 maybe next time they will be asking one or half or whatever it may be okay only one element they have should vanish in only one place to collect all those element so k means it could be maybe i put right now k here set of all uh, function passing through that k whether they form a maximal id or not set of all functions pass set of all continuous function 0 to 1 which passing through k collect all those element whether they form a maximal id or not the answer is yes just i wrote here uh, like this kind of set is form a maximal id any k but only fix to 1k so in particular this question k in particular 0 only so therefore the option b is correct option b is correct only okay anyway fine what about c the set of all function vanishing at both 0 and 1 is a prime ideal wow nice question prime ideal now what is the meaning of prime ideal first of first what is the set notation what is set notation of option c set of all f belongs to c01 they are collecting parent set s is a subset so therefore i collecting element in c01 they f what property has f vanishing 0 and 1 f of 0 equal to 0 and f of 1 equal to 0 which means which are all element in the c01 which passing through 0 and 1 passing through 0 and 1 whether this form a prime ideal or not whether this form a prime ideal or not first of all what is the meaning of prime ideal what is the meaning of prime ideal when the ideal is said to be prime ideal so geometrically set of all function passing through origin and passing through one the function they start from zero set of all function what are the function as a root 0 and 1 collect all those function that function is that function is that collection of all such a functions uh, is called s yes yes is my set what is my set as a any element in c01 whose root is 0 and 1 that element belongs to in s only that kind of element we are collecting okay now this this is a subset clearly why we are taking here and f as this property so collection of all those f form a prime ideal or not so graphically element wherever it will be go finally at 1 0 so this is your f and maybe it will be again so this kind of elements the f should be vanishing 0 and 1 so remaining we don't know wherever it will be go and come we don't we don't know anyway fine this kind of element uh, this kind of elements are there in uh, in s now the question yes form a prime ideal therefore. now what is the definition of prime ideal this is your ring r this is your ideal this is your ideal this when the, this ideal is said to be prime ideal anybody anybody Oh, maximal element, okay. Is there any other thing? What is the definition of prime ideal? What is the definition of prime ideal when the ideal is said to be prime ideal? P divides A, B, na? then P divides A or P divides B. Is it correct? Is it correct? Please recall what is your prime ideal definition.
Okay, I would like to write here. Let alpha, beta, or a, b, whatever. Let a comma b belongs to R. If a b belongs to I, then a belongs to I. R b belongs to I. This is very shortly I am writing here. One second, please. Okay. Uh, suppose we are taking two element a comma b in the ring. Unfortunately, whose product in I. If want to say I is said to be prime ideal, then either one of them in I. We don't know randomly a not b a comma b a comma b we are taking in the ring. Whose product in I. Whose product in I. Whenever whose product in I, which implies that either one of them in I, or A in I or B in I, then such a property I as then the I is said to be prime ideal. Basically, I is ideal. That ideal is said to be prime ideal. Suppose some element, random element in the ring R, whose product unfortunately in I, whenever the product is in I, either one of them should be in I. That is a prime idea. Okay. Anyway, fine. Now, what is the negation of the statement? Negation of the statement. If you prime ideal definition, I written here shortly. What is not uh, not prime ideal means whenever was product in I, either one of them in I. That is the definition for prime. What is the negation of that statement? Negation means not a prime ideal means. There exists a comma b in R whose product in I, but none of them in I. Did you getting my point? Did you getting my point? Okay, again once more. There exists a there exists an element a one b one here, but whose product in I, but none of them in I. If you find a such a element. A, if you find such an element, then we say that I is not a prime. If means whenever A comma B in uh, whenever A B product in I, which implies that either A belongs to I or B belongs to I. Negation means there exists an element A comma B in R whose product in I, but A does not belong to I and B is, B does not belong to I. And and is very important. That is what I said that. There exists a two element a comma b whose product is i, but none of them in i, no one in i. Then we say that i is not a prime ideal. I is not a prime ideal. Okay. So if you want to say this is not a prime ideal, you can find a two element in the ring C zero one whose product in s. But none of them in S. Can anyone have? Anyone can give? Okay. From the diagram, I will show it. I will show it. I felt here C is not a prime ideal. The set S is not a prime ideal. I am going to say it's not a prime ideal. So you are now expecting, sir. What is your Two elements. What are the two elements whose product in yes, but none of them in yes? Okay. Anyway, so any participant, please come, come, please help me. This is this is my F. This belongs to yes. Come on, please. Come on. This element F belongs in the set S. Come on. Come on. Please, a response. 
Yes, you okay? Very good. Very good. He he responds. No. Why did he yes? He is responding. That's all. But the answer is not correct. Kannada. Okay. Very good. No. No. Yes. Exactly. No. Why? If element in the yes yes has this two property, f should vanish in zero as well as f should vanish in one. But this function vanishing only zero, not for one. So therefore, f does not belong to yes clearly. Point number one. Okay. Next, Karnata, come on. Next, this is my function. This is my function g. This g also element of c zero one. It's a continuous function. Now the question, g belongs to yes. G belongs to yes. Come on, Karnata. G belongs to yes. No. Very good. Why g does not belongs to yes? If g belongs to yes, means g g should vanish in zero as well as one. But our g here vanishing only one, but not in zero. But not in zero. Therefore, f also not in yes. G also not in yes. But they are element in c zero one. Parents it ring. Now the question. Now the question. What is the product? Product. What is the product belongs to yes or not? If f is a function, g is a function. We are producting. How we are product to define f of x and g of x? It's a scalar multiplication. It's not. It's a point wise multiplication. Not a scalar multiplication. Point wise multiplication. I'm sorry. It's a point wise multiplication. Come, come, come here. Now the new element f g, the new element f g, h of x is equal to f of x and g of x. This is a or h of x new function. The new function. Now I am asking the new function whether it belongs to s or not. If the h of x belongs to here, h of x should satisfying this two condition. Okay. Now you have to check here h of zero. f of 0 into g of 0 f of 0 0 but g of 0 is non zero g taking non zero value f, f taking zero value so therefore 0 into non zero element product zero therefore h of 0 is zero what about h of 1 what about h of 1 h of 1 how h of x how we are defining f of x and g of x f continuous g continuous product continuous therefore h continuous h clearly belongs to c01 h of 1 h of 1 means f of 1 into g of 1 now what is f of 1 f f taking at 1 it will be non zero value it will be non zero value It's clear right okay f of 1 non zero what about g of 1 g is our function this is a g function this is a g function right This is g function. G taking g of one is zero. So f of one is non-zero. G of one is zero. The product should be zero. Now h is a function vanishing zero and one. Clearly h belongs to yes, which means f and g whose product belongs to yes, but none of them in yes. None of them in yes. So therefore, therefore yes is not a prime ideal. Yes, this is not a prime idea. Did you getting my point? Is there any question? Is there any question? Madam, is there any question? No, sir. No. So clear, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so we have said that yes is not a prime ideal. What about maximal ideal? Yes, no. We are. Uh, I written the result. The ring, C zero one, element only vanishing only one point. Then the set is called. Then the set becomes maximal ideal. So here, yes, in element of S vanishing two point. This is not a maximal ideal. This is also not a prime ideal. Now the participant, I would like to ask one more question. F of one, ah, sorry, f of zero, f of one by two, 
f of 1 by 4 so four element set of all f vanishing four points 0 Zero, one by two, one by four, one. Now this form a prime ideal. This is my new yes. I defined set of all f. It varies in four points: zero and one by four, one by two, one. Someone G B. No sir. Very good G B. Good. Is there any other answer? Is there any any is there any other answer? No. Now, what is the moral of the story? In the set, set of all f plus c zero one, f vanishing more than one point that never form a prime medium. Okay, I would like to ask one more question here. So, this c zero one is very important in the ring theory, not only ring theory. You will do the real analysis uh, research problem, or the, it it will be coming. C zero one is a it's a very different story, it's very important. So now I would like one answer. just one more for that uh, participant. F of x is equal to zero for all x belongs to zero to half. Now the question: This f is a prime ideal or not? So what is the geometric technique? This is. So, what are the elements uh, in S? The element should be up to one by two. It should be vanished. Then remaining, we don't know wherever it will be going. Wherever it will go, like this, we don't know. This is uh, zero to one. Set up all F belongs to C zero one. F of X equal to zero for every X belongs to zero comma one by two. One every element. If the element should vanish in zero to one by two for every point. Collect all those elements. That is your set S. Now the question: Yes, form a prime ideal or not? That is one more for you. Okay, this is one more for you. Point number one. This is a prime ideal. Uh huh. No. No. No, it's not a prime ideal. Just to think about. Okay, it's not a prime ideal. Just to think about. Think about means you try to you try to find a two element in C zero one, but none of them here. But this product here. But anyway, I'm not saying answer no or yes. Try to find. Okay. Anyway, another only one question I would like to ask the participant. Someone, please say. All polynomials are continuous function. This no very well. So every polynomial function is also an element of C zero one. It's clear, right? If you take any polynomial of degree one or two, zero, whatever it may be, is an element of C zero one. The first in. Does there exist at least one polynomial in S? Non-zero polynomial. Does there exist a non-zero polynomial function which belongs to any S? Please. No. Why, many one then? Why? Non-zero function. Non-zero function. Why come on, tie, tie. Come on. No, Maladi. Why, 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 Maladi? Uncountable. Come on, Mani Mani. Very close. Uncountable. What? He is very close. He is very close to the answer. The question is whether this or does there exist a polynomial zeros? Okay. Okay, very close, very close. Now clear. I want need clear, clear, very close. Ah, I swear, yeah, very good, ba. 
Nth degree polynomial well has only n roots. Very good, exactly. Clap. That's the uh, Aishwarya. She is point out. Very good. Nice, Aishwarya. If an element in S, the element should have 0 to 1 by t. Every element in this root. If it is an nth degree polynomial, the polynomial has at most n roots. Here, come, uh, here real plane, no? So, nth degree polynomial at most n roots. But, uh, so we are taking f. 0 to 1, every element is a root, you collect all those f only. But polynomial never in yes. Why? If it is a polynomial in yes, the nth degree polynomial has infinitely many roots. That give contradict for the contradict for the theorem, fundamental theorem. Fundamental theorem says every nth degree polynomial has at most n roots. Whether they are repeating or non-repeating, does it matter? At most n roots. Only finite number of roots are there. But here, uncountably many roots. So, therefore, no f, no f, no polynomials are there in S. Okay. Next question. Is there any trigonometry function is there? Trigonometry function is there? That is homework for you. Take any trigonometry functions are there? Okay. Another one more question I would like to ask. I would like to ask. So I am very interesting for the people. They are responding and quickly. So set up all f one by two not. Now the question. This is my set. Uh, please come and participate. Set up all f belongs to C zero one. F does not vanish one by two. Whether it is forming ideal or not. Come on. Whether it is forming ideal or not. I want to know you guys whether you understand step by step or not. That is what I am asking. Question. Simple only. Whether it is forming ideal or not. No. Why no one answering? It's so difficult. Uh -huh. What about Malati? Malati ka somebody? Mani mm -hmm. No? It's an easy one. Though. It is very simple. It may discontinuous. No, it's irresponsive answer. This no is an element in C01. We are collecting C01. There should be continuous. One second, sir. Somebody is asking you to repeat the question. Oh. Now this is a set. I written here everything in the set. So double F C01 such that F of 1 by 2 not equal to 0. Now the question is whether this S form is ideal or not. I, yes, form. Suppose if it is ideal, then I would like to ask first in maximal ideal or not, prime ideal or not. So, what is your answer? Come on. Come on. Thinking is very important. Not for solving many problems is not important. Each and every problem, each corner, we should understand. We need to structure our C01. Once if you understand structure of C01, any question they will be asking, we can say very quickly and clearly, correctly. Okay, anyway, there is no response, but anyway, you tried and uh, this is not an ideal, even though it is not a subring. Why? Zero element is not there, not ideal. Yes, but uh, makes okay. Anyway, fine. Money one uh, response later on. So, f belongs to C01, f should not vanish in one by two. So, first of all, if it is an ideal, it should basically subring. Subring in the sense it contains zero element, additive identity is there, but zero element does not follow this property. Zero element everywhere vanishing. 
but this says that one by two never range. Therefore, additive element is not there. Zero element is not there. It does not form a idea. Okay. So lot of questions are there. But anyway, this is enough. Now we are trying to solve the problem. It will take more than one hour, but it's a very important, interesting concept. A lot of questions are there. C zero one. Whether this form a UFD, ED, PAD. So lot of questions are there. Lot of questions are there. So uh, okay. Anyway, we will go with our problem. So what is that? The set of all function vanishing at uh, both zero and one is not a prime ideal. It will be vanishing finite number of points more than one point. It does not form a prime ideal. I have here hint also and also yes vanishing up to zero to one by two. That whether that form a prime ideal or not, you can check. Now this is the last question. Uh, the last option. Set up if belongs to C zero one such that f of x bar n equal to zero for every x belongs to zero to one for some for some n is for fixed n n five or four whatever you can take but n should be strictly greater than one then which implies that f of x equal to zero now the question s is equal to set up all element in the C zero one first given any statement written here you should convert to that in set notation then then you can find the answer very quickly and clearly. Without making any mistake, f of x whole power n equal to zero for every x belongs to zero to one. This is a given statement. What is that meaning? You should take uh, n equal. Suppose we assume that uh, n equal to four, then what? Uh, what it becomes? Just randomly. C zero one. We need to understand first. That is what I have written here. Just. For example, n equal to four for every x. Not n equal to four. Just you write two first. You check two. So, how the element? Now the question: What is the cardinality of the set? Do you know? What are the elements are there? Do you know? Do you know? Please. First, I want need. How many elements are there? Okay, I will ask. In C zero one, just the interesting only C zero one. The interesting. So anybody answering? Anybody answering? This is my F. Whether this F belongs to yes, uh, this here, this S one. Please participant. Please participant. Come on, come on. This is my F. My F is uh, belongs to S one. Come on, come on. Do the problem very quickly. If an element in S one, what are the property needed? F of x whole square should be zero for every x in zero to one. Whether this F has this property? Uh huh. No, why? 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 Reason. Come on. Reason. Why? Why F does not belongs to S one? F does not satisfying that condition. First of all, F of x whole square equal to zero. Now, what is your conclusion? What is your conclusion? F of x equal to zero for all x. What is that meaning? F of x. You take any element zero to one. You substitute in F. Take square equal to zero. Suppose, for example, you you have to apply zero f of zero. F of zero value means some alpha. Alpha square equal to zero means alpha should be zero, right? Just to take element x arbitrary. You take zero to one. You take arbitrary element there. F of that arbitrary element. Or just to call it arbitrary element x one. So square equal to zero. What is that meaning? Some alpha one square equal to zero. Alpha one square equal to zero means alpha should be zero. Why? Alpha square equal to zero. Why should be alpha zero? Anyone? 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 Alpha square equal to zero. Why it is implies that alpha equal to zero? Come on. Alpha is an element where. 
LM and F in C01, each input of 0 to 1 whose output in the real number. Whose output in the real number. Ah, very good. Alpha is an element in R. Very good. Very good, Hemavadi. Very good. Is an element in uh, R. So R is a field, an integral domain. Where two element product equal to 0, na, either one of them 0. Or two product not equal to 0, na, none of them not equal to 0. Okay. Now alpha square, alpha and alpha equal to 0 mean since R is an integral domain, very good. R is an integral domain, then alpha should be 0. So that is what here I am saying that whenever f of x square equal to 0, f should be this is a random x1 is 0, 1. And whose output is alpha 1, random alpha 1, we don't know, alpha 1 square is equal to 0. Alpha 1 in the element of field, as in the integral domain, that uh, in the integral domain, alpha 1 should be 0. So random output 0, which means total f of x is 0. Okay, total f of x is 0. So we are concluded that almost very close near, when put n equal to 0, Whenever f of x square equal to 0, f should be 0. Now the first thing, how many elements are there in S? S1. When n equal to 2, how many elements are there in S1? Only one. Very good, Aishwarya. Very good. Only one. Very good. What is that function? What is that function? How many elements are there now? Only one element. Your answer is correct. 100% is correct. What is that element? Zero element. Very good. Very good. Why f of x square equal to zero for all x means f of x whole square equal to zero. This implies that f of x equal to zero. Why means f of x is a real number to square equal to zero. That implies that that real number equal to zero for each x whose output is a real number. Alpha square equal to zero, which implies alpha equal to zero. F of x square equal to zero, f of should be zero. Okay. Only zero element as one the yes, yes one as zero element when n equal to two. The question when n equal to two, when n equal to five, when n equal to n, what is your result? What is your conclusion? How many elements are there? Any n, n strictly greater than zero, strictly greater than one. How many elements are there in the set? Please. Please come on. Please come on. Only one. Aha. Uh -huh. Good. Good. Very good. Only one elements are there. When n equal to two, we understood a little bit. For any n, n should be greater than one. This set as only zero function. This set as only zero function only. Okay. So now S is equal to only zero, zero function. Now if F in C01 such that F of X4 N equal to zero for some N, N4, 5, whatever, for some N, F of X4 N equal to zero, which implies it F is zero function. Yes. Yes. We are concluded. You are to right here f of x whole power n. This is some alpha. Alpha power n equal to 0. Alpha power n. Just think about polynomial. x power n equal to 0 means x should be 0. All roots are 0 only. So same thing. f of x whole power n equal to 0. f of x should be 0 for all x. Therefore, whenever f satisfying this property, this implies that f should be 0 only. Is that any question? So this is a wrong statement. Only B, only correct statement. Is there any question? Madam, is there any question? No, sir. No, no one asked it. Okay. Now I have to move, try to do the more problems. Only one problem up to we are done. But a lot of concepts are involving. Anyway, fine. So we have learned a lot of things from the single problem. So in future, any question asking C01, most probably, most probably you will attend. I don't know. 
whether you if you are going to attend very clear or not okay anyway and now i will do it some other problem first of all i try to do the one simple problem so remaining problems are so this is also one more important problem just i will try to say p and q be distinct distinct primes distinct primes then then z mod z mod p square q z as as exactly exactly three distinct ideas b that mod p square q is z as exactly three distinct ideas that mod p square q is z as exactly two distinct two distinct prime ideas that mod p square q is z as a unique maximal ideal ideals so read the question and do the answer let r be the r be a non zero non zero ring with identity non zero ring with identity such that a square is equal to a for all a in the ring r which of the following are true option a there is no such a ring exists such a ring exists b 2a equal to 0 for all a in the ring c 3a equal to 0 for all a in the ring z mod 2 is at is a sub ring of one what is your answer come on two questions we will solve very quickly okay anyway i'll try to explain let p and q be a distinct prime numbers so what is the notation of this z mod p square q into z So that is called uh, this set is isomorphic to Z Z p square Q as this form. So this set is isomorphic Z p square Q. So modulo modulo p square Q. You know modulo operation, right? Second question option C D. Yeah, okay. Anyway, fine. The every set is isomorphic. This this is a question, Guru. This is a Z and this is a subgroup, normal subgroup. This is a quotient group, not only quotient group. It's a quotient ring. This is a quotient. Every this it is the quotient ring. This quotient ring has three exactly distinct prime ideals or ideals, whatever they will be asking question. Now, what is your answer? But this ring is isomorphic with this, not for exactly equal. Don't try to write equal. it will be this ring is isomorphic to this once they have isomorphic they have the same property this suppose uh, this ring has a five prime ideal this also five prime ideal 
so again once more i am telling don't write equal to this is a quotient ring if this quotient ring is isomorphic to this if you know the result of this then you can conclude all those things okay anyway, i'll write here i'm not going to prove right now z n z n we know basically z n is a cyclic group number of subgroups of z n is number of uh, n dot means number of is number of number of positive divisor positive divisor of n one number of ideals ideals of zn equal to number of subgroups a uh, number of positive divisor equal to number of number of divisor of number of positive divisor the same thing number of positive divisor of n number of prime ideals it is zn equal to number of number of distinct prime divisor fourth one number of maximal ideals number of maximal ideals equal to number of distinct prime divisor only number of number of number of distinct number of number of distinct the same thing number of distinct prime divisor prime divisor why means number of prime ideal is equal to number of maximal ideal why this is a commuted ring with unity finite commuted ring with unity number of prime ideal is equal to number of maximal ideal always maximal ideal is implies prime ideal but prime ideal need not exist need not imply maximal ideal when this is to finite commuted ring with unity The prime ideal implies maximal ideal. So is that an is a n element is a finite commuted ring with unity number of prime ideal is equal to number of maximal ideal. This is a result. I am not going to prove anything. So these are the result. From that result, you can conclude write all those options. Please just write the result and uh, take the answer. So the question, uh, Z P square Q has exactly three distinct ideas. How many divisors are there? How many divisors are there? P square and Q. P divide, Q divide, P square divide, P Q divide. So more than four, one divide. So this says that has exactly three distinct ideas. Wrong. Wrong. Why? Number of ideals equal to number of positive divisors. Positive divisor, right? So divisor one, two, three, four, and p into q, p square into q. It was. It has more than three. So more than three. So therefore, option A is option A says that only exactly three distinct divisors. Wrong. So that uh, another one more thing. Again, the option B has exactly three distinct ideals. What is the difference between and uh, A and B? same thing i written here i think so wait wait a minute i written the option exactly three distinct prime ideals sorry exactly three distinct prime ideals here prime ideals rewrite that so 
has exactly three distinct prime ideals. So number of prime ideals equal to number of prime divisors. How many prime divisors are there? How many prime divisors are there here? How many prime divisors are there? P square Q. Only two prime divisors are there. P divides and Q divides. P Q is not a prime. Okay. P divides and Q divides. Only two prime numbers divides P square Q. Therefore, it has exactly two prime ideals. So option B says that exactly three. So wrong. Option C says that as exactly two prime device, prime ideals. Yes, because it has two prime divisor. So therefore, option C is correct. Option B is false. What about what about option D? As unique maximal ideal. Here I wrote I written here finite commuted ring with unity prime ideals in place maximal ideals. Zn is a finite commuted ring with unity. Z p square q is a finite commuted ring with unity. Number of prime ideals equal to number of maximal ideals. Here number of prime ideals two. Therefore number of maximal ideal is two. Okay. But here given number of maximal ideal is unique. So therefore option D is false. Okay. Is there any question? Is there any question? No. No, sir. Oh, okay. Most probably people are expecting like this. Just write result and do the problem. Write result and do the problem. Yes. The olden day CSR uh, like that, but it is not like that. They will be asking question in concept very deeply. Which means you want to know the theory. Theory background, no need for uh, all things proof, but uh, theory you should understand what is a geometrical way, what it want to say that. Okay, anyway, uh, what is this problem? Let R be a non-zero ring with identity as this property. A ring as this property, what do you want to say? A ring as this property a square equal to a for every given already a is a non zero ring for every a in on the R. This is called a Boolean ring. Boolean ring. Ah, very good. Boolean ring. This is a Boolean ring. Okay, fine. You know Boolean ring. Definition of Boolean, Boolean ring is every element in the ring a square equal to a that is called another item potent element, right? A square A equal to means idempotent element. Every element is an idempotent element. That ring is called a Boolean ring. Okay, fine. What is the answer? There is no such a ring existed. They said that, yeah, characteristic of Boolean ring is two. Very good. Exactly. Clear. Very clear. So, do you know the proof of the characteristic of the ring? Boolean ring is two. Do you know? Just one line proof. Okay, if you, if you don't know, try to do it. Okay, anyway, let R be an answer ring as this property means that ring is Boolean ring. We have a lot of Boolean rings. For example, R equal to Z2 direction Z2. This is one of the Boolean ring. R only Z2 also Boolean ring. Why it is Boolean ring? You take any element whose square equal to 2. Here means square means here additive operation. Okay. R, you should take here this z. What are the elements? 0, 1. 1 square means 1 square means one only, right? 1 into 1. That's all. 0 square means 0. Only two elements are there. Two elements as this property. Therefore, therefore, it is a Boolean ring. Only Boolean ring is uh, that symmetric difference. What is some, something they said? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that is also Boolean ring. You written wrong. I couldn't understand. Right now, I, I feel that thing. So, symmetric difference and set notation. There is a union intersection is there. But uh, right now, I don't want to explain that thing. This is a one of the Boolean ring. Someone uh, written. That is also Boolean ring. Very good. Very good. Okay. This is a Boolean ring. Uh, 
this option says that there is no such uh, ring satisfying this condition wrong okay to a equal to zero for every a why why that we don't know why to a equal to zero why no okay a plus a uh, someone want to say answer please okay someone mic is open please a plus a whole square equal to a why we know every element in the ring a square equal to a in particular i i like element a plus a equal to a plus a whole square equal to a plus a a is a ring and a is also a ring sum also a ring appa this is an element c c square equal to c is it okay a plus a whole square equal to a plus a only this is a given hypothesis from that hypothesis i take like element this thing okay fine so a into a equal to a plus a what about this this is a square a square two times of a square this is equal to a plus a so here the given a square equal to a for every a so instead of a square you should write a a plus a to a this is equal to a plus a so now you have to take under addition you have the cancellation law you should do it from the things to a equal to zero. a is an arbitrary a this is true Okay, therefore option B is right. Once option two A equal to zero, then option C is wrong. This is a subring is not is a clear idea. Uh, actually, mathematically, this is not a valid statement. Why is not a valid statement? This is also Boolean ring, but uh, this is not a subset of even though it is not a subset. Why? So every element in the ring is an ordered pair, an element a comma b, right? So how we can write like this a comma b such that this a belongs to z two and b belongs to again z two. Okay, a belongs to z two and b belongs to z two. So every element in the R it should be ordered pair, but z mod two is a is a subring of R given in the CSR question. I think it will be a correct answer in the CSR. But it is not to make valid things. I have it. This means any ring has this property. That ring has this is a subring. That is the meaning option D, right? Correct. But they are given. But I, it will be changing the sentence. How we have how we have to changing means that mod to is a is a subring of is a subring of. Is an isomorphic to the sum subring of R. Z mod two is a is a isomorphic to the sum subring of R. If written like this, then the option is correct. But I don't know the given answer is uh, correct only in the CSR. Okay, it's not a valid statement. Maybe they are assumed that they are assumed. But uh, they are not written properly, precisely. So uh, here, Z mod two is it is isomorphic to the sum subring of R. Then the option is correct. The option is correct. Okay. So without mentioning this, this option is not valid. First, the statement is not valid. Why is not valid? This is my ring. My ring has that property, but Z mod two is it is a even though it's not a subset. Then how we can conclude that it's a subring? Okay, did we getting my point? Even though Z mod two is it is not a subset. If one needs subset, the subset should contain ordered pair. Why? Every element in this set ordered pair. Okay, understanding my point. Okay. Anyway, fine. So now, what is our conclusion? The conclusion is, uh, if I written the CSR exam, I should write wrong only. But when this is a correct form, means is isomorphic to the sum subring of R, then it is the option is correct. Okay, anyway, fine. Uh, whatever you do it. Is there any question? 
so some csr question has this kind of problems in the csr and i don't know why this is happens so this is a all over india conducting exam the, when the people going to take csr setting the question paper they need to very carefully do the construct but sometimes they made a mistakes or i don't know maybe they written but the typing people may be missing that we don't know okay okay anyway, fine next we will go to some other problem mm if i take irreducibility anyway i will do the some other problem irreducibility einstein criteria okay so you guys you know or i will do it okay fourth problem or fifth problem i don't know which of the which of the following which of the following rings r p so each problem i can take at least one hour usually when i was taking class in my the institution each problem i would i i will take at least one hour very deeply and how people they are constructed why they are constructed like this if you change the contract construction what is the answer become how we can construct a sub, sub uh, extra condition all those things i will explain um, but here we need to do the problems but again once more please request my experience i want to say these things so number of problem is doesn't matter if each day at least four problems five problems the concept is very clear after one month each paper you are getting idea and the subject is a very clear from that subject that is my experience whole day studying is not a matter whole day or 24 hours 20 hours 18 hours 16 hours i am studying doesn't matter if you studied at least one hour you try to understand the concept each and every line the one more question you maybe you will ask sir how long time it will take to understand the mathematics my point of view my point of view in the sense my experience if you want to learn maths you want need some guide guide means some guru or some some please someone the mic is open please check the mic each and every one please okay anyway someone mic is open it will be disturbing the extra sound it will be coming please close that okay anyway fine so what i want to say means you should try try to read with some guidance some guidance means some people they know maths and they teach and they will explain initially you want need some people want to guide or otherwise if you read individually and learn everything it will take time suppose someone they want to qualify in the csr exam without any guide or any coaching or any practice practice in the sense some other uh, institutions there we are we are also having institutions for conducting the csr exams all those things so we have nbhm and csr cma we are giving all those exams for giving training for that so in the sense we are giving simultaneously for interview also then how to teach in the class how to attract the students how to cover the audience how to make a joke in the class so all those things we are giving training here okay anyway fine so if you want to learn individually without any guide it will take time but surely you will learn it will take maybe it depends the person some person it will take 4 year 3 year 2 year 5 year even though 10 years still no one qualified 15 years they will written the csr exam still not qualified okay if you have a good guide or good guidance you have to qualify it is enough for one year or if you are very smart it is enough for six months you are very dull 
still i don't know even the set notation i don't know up to in the msc i studied i couldn't understand the any subject but i know little amount of uh, little bit for theorems and statement i remember that's all then can i clear that uh, it, it is possible to qualify the csr exam uh, somebody is asking uh, i said that yes but you need proper guidance you need a proper guidance in the sense if anyone know the mathematics very clear and precisely teaching na uh, please you go and join there you go and learn from that for six months you should learn after that you have to read individually then try to solve the problem then you will reach after one year one and a half year you learn the basic concept of mathematics now wherever you go and attend the class attend the class in the sense wherever you go and attend the conference and the seminar or you have to give uh, somebody is giving talk in the college wherever you go you understand the mathematical logic notations one more thing you want to learn math first you should know about the basic quantifiers basic quantifier basic quantifier in the sense basic mathematical logics given statement how to negate a given statement is true whether the negation statement is true or false negation statement is false so given any uh, statement or theorem you try to negate if you learn the negation also meaning of the negation when learn the mathematics i written here yeah, if suppose if i given yes statement you should quickly write negation then try to understand what is the meaning of yes what is the negation of yes once you learn like this you have to a very strong in mathematics after 2 years within 2 years even though you never learn any logical argument or logical way for studying maths in up to in msc doesn't matter uh, my experience uh, i was studied bs in vivekananda college in chennai and i'm studying msc in anna university the gindi so both college as well as the university all of them nice but i didn't learn much more from the faculty in anna university faculty are they are very, very qualified and they are most probably people they are finishing phd iits all faculties are nice but even though i couldn't understand faculties are very strong but i couldn't understand after msc only i completed msc whatever you people doing done nowadays i am also done same thing only just memorizing and written the exam just the one thing my university they are encouraging not only my university even though my college uh, vekananda college the faculty members they are always encouraging to the who are asking the questions so i will be asking questions so i ask a lot of questions but the people they will always encourage no one discouraging me from that encourage only up to right now i am standing here so in the sense in the max after completing msc i am only for 0.5 percent to know the meaning of math statement like that only not for very clear after that only i am sitting and studying i am not going any job only for studying but it takes some time times uh, maybe first time you are to go going to take mark 70 even though you are spend one year so don't feel like that we are getting only 70 the cut off is 80 90 like that to so try to try to again once more to try to do it the next time you are getting more than 100 uh, it depends so hard work never fails so don't think negative point another one more thing you want become very good mathematics mathematician one thing want needed be strong don't compare anybody no one equal to you you are the person equal to you only you are the god gifted human being you have some talent that guy have some different talent don't compare okay but maybe naturally you don't have learn maths unfortunately you are taking mathematics course but after that Uh, you unfortunately you take in mathematics, but even though naturally you are not coming, but doesn't matter. 
so practice makes man perfect that will be true hard work never fails you do the practice and you do more hard work not more hard work in the sense you have to do the smart work another one more thing you want learn maths very quickly you want need a team four or five people are need at least one team if you sharing the ideas knowledge how to share how to share and say how much you are sharing your knowledge that twice the time you learn from that things if i am teaching here i learned lot of things comparing you you are learn something only from my side only but whenever i am teaching i learn lot of things from the students so teaching is very important to learn maths so if you know the concept please you go and explain your to a student or your friends whatever the guy for all interest to learn that is very very important very very important okay so someone says that if i suppose of four or five people they are studying gathering the same class this guy may be they think if i say something she may be she or he learned then maybe he or she will qualified maybe we are not qualified the thing like that please don't think like that please don't think like that whatever you know you have to give 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 it will be coming naturally you have mind naturally have mind lot of source it will be creating okay always you have to think like that don't uh, involve other social activities when you study mathematics don't compare to the society people and another one more things not all people who study maths only few people only in this earth only studying maths who are all studying maths they are very lucky people once you know the maths you can do anything in the world you can study geography history science physics chemistry anybody anything you can do so always you have to proud proud of yourself so because we can do anything but other people they can do only something only that i realized in my life okay and also you have to enjoy always when do the problems you getting some ideas or knowledge to try to express your enjoyness to the other people also try to share okay actually i don't know how to say in english i don't know because i was studied everything in my mother tongue so a lot of ideas i have but i am not uh, correct way to converting right now here so always you have to say that i am proud of in the air why i was studying i am studying maths so maths is a the mathematical language is a god language it will be a god language not all people to understand only few people only understand unfortunately we are taken maths course we try to learn it will be different language this language you want to learn you need a proper guru guru in the sense somebody is very very well known for maths not for college teacher or not for you somewhere some people are there please you go and learn one six month don't hesitate maybe i have this age someone have more than my age don't hesitate so come and sit i come and ask only six month no need to ask after that within six month you learn all the activities then you go and enjoy that's all you have unique skill in this world but still most of the people never realize these things i said everywhere anywhere if somebody is calling i said i am mathematician i have such a brave so before in 2015 16 i don't have such a confidence because that time i don't know now i feeling i know this language i can do anything all people are ordinary people i am not ordinary people i am not ordinary human you have to say like this always because you are mathematician you are learning god language it's a god language science is not like uh, ordinary language it's a god language not all people understand but we have chance in the earth to learn the god language but that language is not easy it take time so you should uh, 
such proper people and to learn okay anyway i think the time is going to run out so we need uh, whenever you study mathematics people most of the time they getting depressing whenever you getting a depressing just to close the book and whatever you like you go into it again come and do it if you getting depressed means again you should read na that time is mind is not working okay if you getting something depressed i couldn't understand so why means if you are very new to enter this mathematics world when read the theory and next there is a exercise when you do the exercise you will take time you are not galen you are not hastin just a read single time even though hastin galen when they written the book after 50 years 40 years only they getting more than 20 years experience in the research teaching after that only they written how it is possible to learn 6 months to solve the exercise problem sometimes it will take 10 exercise problems given at least you do two problems three problems one problem enough again you read next time again read next time each time you are reading you getting new new ideas the same concept in the different point of view each point of view you are giving some happiness initially we are not feeling anything but it take time at least the 6 month properly you have to sit and read always you should think positive only don't go negative you are not equal to anyone again i am saying you are a unique person in the world you are create a god creating you you will do anything but it will take time you want need passion to learn maths first you need passion to learn maths and individually try to learn and if you can't understand please go and search some mathematics people who are all good in maths and who are teaching way is good or you know you go and learn don't hesitate anything okay i think the time is run out so near 5 o'clock last 10 minutes gone so again i am saying number of problems it doesn't matter one problem one day if you individually solved without any help and deeply you understood that that is enough 30 days you learn the group theory very clearly i am very sure suppose you are knowledge is very poor it will take two months that's all it take two months only not for taking year and year if you are not sit study properly and the concept i am saying the concept way it will take 10 years also even though same group theory concept somebody's people the teaching in the college for 10 years even though they couldn't understand very clear but uh, number of times teaching number of times studying is not a matter how your brain is very clearly to want to work please sleep well and whenever you read max long time somebody said my experience i read 15 hours 16 hours it's uh, every day i run uh, read uh, read the book 15 hours 16 hours it's simple for me after 2 years i felt why you want read 50 50 hours no need or to sleep very clearly uh, very very early 10 o'clock then wake up in the morning 4 o'clock and to start the reading up to 8 o'clock then i am going to cook and whatever i like i will do it again i will start again evening cook and eat and the night should be sleep and frequently only one my humble request for all studying long time long time the day long hours please take water more and more or otherwise you have you have problem in future lot of problems like piles it will be coming and the dandruff it will be coming that here it will be coming black color all those things are coming so one thing i want to say so you have to study how long time possible you have to study and enjoy and take more and more water always because whenever you thinking and giving pressure the mind is the, it will be automatically producing heat once heat coming the air falling automatically coming and our face is not so good so always take a water and do it 
per day at least 3 liter 4 liter water you can take it and read and enjoy wherever you go okay anyway i think this is a running time time out i'm very sorry it will take more time so i want i don't know uh, i felt something i sharing my in my experience in my life that's all okay anyway thank you madam thank you sir thank you thank you all the participant i sincerely thank our resource person for detailed explanation on ring theory i am sure that the participants have gained a complete understanding of ring theory we request the participants to practice what they have learned in today's session and be ready for monday's session sharp at 3 pm now i request the participants to fill in the feedback form using the link posted in the chat box thank you have a nice day thank you okay thank you one second participant have a wonderful holiday for tomorrow and tomorrow lockdown for in yeah, tamil nadu i don't know other state so be safe in the room be a house itself don't go outside follow the rules and regulation and read the ring theory problem and about the c01 whatever you like last four or five classes so you learn and enjoy it in the coming monday we will try to solve problems for in the complex analysis monday is the last class for us okay okay thank you